19th and 20th century. Women, uneducated, and the poor were not allowed to participate in the voting process. Only educated and wealthy men were allowed to vote. Women's Suffrage Movement Women's Suffrage Movement was launched in Europe and USA to empower them in the country and get their voting right. The power of women came into limelight when they participated in organizing and managing different kinds of work in the absence of men who were away fighting during the World War. Gradually, people became more aware about the capabilities of women and their decision-making skills. The Suffragettes The women who fought for equal rights were called the Suffragettes. They demanded women participation in the government. Suffragettes chained themselves to railings in public places and went on hunger strikes. Due to this, many suffragettes were imprisoned and many were fed forcefully. The outcome. As a result, women finally managed to get their right to vote legally. After prolonged struggle, India attained independence on 15th August 1947. Founding fathers of the nation decided to adopt republican form of government. This means that the president, who is also the head of the state, is an elected person. Constitutional Provisions Article 52 to 78 in Part 5 of the Indian Constitution deal with the Union Executive. Article 52 states that there shall be a President of India. Article 53 provides that the executive power of the Union shall be vested in the President. Subsequently, Articles 54 to 62 deal with eligibility of the President, election process, oath or affirmation of the President, impeachment and provisions to fill vacancy in the office of the president occurring by reason of his her death resignation or removal or otherwise eligibility Number 1. No person shall be eligible for election as president unless e. Number A. Is a citizen of India. B. Has completed the age of 35 years. And C. Is qualified for election as a member of the house of the people. Number 2. A person shall not be eligible for election as president if he holds any office of profit under the government of India or the government of any state or under any local or other authority subject to the control of any of the said governments. Electoral College Article 54 of the Constitution provides that the President is elected by the members of an electoral college consisting of 
Sunday, the elected members of both the Houses of Parliament. B. The elected members of the Legislative Assemblies of the States. After 70th Amendment of the Constitution in 1992, the elected members of the Assemblies of the National Capital Territory of Delhi and the Union Territory of Puducherry also take part in the election of the President. Method the president is elected by the system of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote. Proportional representation. Proportional representation is a system of election where each voter does not enjoy same value of vote. Thus, in presidential election of 2007, vote value of every member of parliament was 708. On the other hand, Vote value of MLAs from Uttar Pradesh was 208 and for MLAs of Sikkim Assembly was merely 7. There is a well-defined formula to determine vote value of the members of the Electoral College. Let us understand this formula by illustrations of the presidential election of 2007. The number of total elected members in the Uttar Pradesh Assembly is 403 and the total population of the state in 1971 was recorded as 8,038,49,905. If we divide the total population of the state by total number of elected members in the Assembly and further divide it by 1000, we get 208. The total number of votes assigned to the elected members of the state assemblies was 5,49,474. If we divide this number with the total number of elected MPs, that is 543 members of Lok Sabha and 233 members of Rajya Sabha, we get 708, which was the vote value of each MP. In the elections of assemblies and Lok Sabha, voters cast their votes to one candidate by marking or clicking the button. But in the election of president, members of the electoral college can vote to all candidates in the fray. In fact, they mark their preference instead of simply putting stamp or button. Suppose there are four candidates. Here, a voter can give his or her choice. Minimum quota To get elected for the post of president, the candidate is required to secure minimum votes. This is known as minimum quota. If no candidate is able to secure quota in the first count, all candidates except first to automatically get excluded from fray and their second priority votes are counted. Transferable vote system Example, in the fifth presidential election in 1969, total 15 candidates contested. The quota fixed for election was 4,18,169 votes. As no candidate secured the required quota in the first count, candidate after candidate was excluded till only two candidates, namely Sri V. V. Giri and Sri Neelam Sanjeeva Reddy remained in the field. Sri V. V. Giri, who secured the quota, was declared elected by the returning officer on 20th August 1969 and the newly elected president assumed office on 24th August 1969. Conduct of election as per the provision of Article 324.1 of the Indian Constitution, Election Commission of India conducts election of the President. 
election programs are scheduled in such a way that the new president should get elected before the end of the tenure of the current president. Places of poll, a room in the parliament house in New Delhi and a room in all state. Legislative assembly secretariats are generally fixed as places of poll. Dispute over election number one. An election petition calling in question an election to the office of the president may be presented by any candidate. At such election or by any 20 or more electors joined together as petitioners. Number two. The authority having jurisdiction to try an election petition is the Supreme Court of India. Number three, an election petition shall be presented within 30 days from the date of publication of the declaration containing the name of the returned candidate.